Hey math students, today instead of subjecting you to my beautiful face, I'm going to have you look at my computer screen because, well, today's lesson is really more easily done on a computer than it is on a whiteboard. So what I want to look at today is I want to look at, um, I'm not as interested in the, I'm not as interested in the trig functions today as I am in the angles themselves. So uh, as we saw in the last video, you can, uh, th this is standard position of an angle. Okay, the, uh, uh, the initial side is going out the x-axis, the positive x-axis. And the terminal side is just, well, anywhere it wants to be. And uh, this angle that I have right here, this would be an acute angle because it's between 0 and 90. This angle over here, this would be an obtuse angle. It's between 90 and 180. And let me just uh, put those. There we go. All right. So now uh, we've, we've uh, uh, labeled the measurements of the angles. This is between 90 and 180. This down here would be between 180 and 270. And uh, this over here is between 270 and, well, it says zero, but let's, uh, let's call it, um, there we go. Let's call it 360, okay? So this is between 270 and 360. And uh, you can actually keep going above 360, and you can go up here, and uh, instead of calling this 90, you could also call it 450 and you can keep going over here and instead of calling this 180 you could call it a uh, 540 and then instead of calling this one 270 you could also call it 630 and uh, after two laps around the circle uh, this would be 720 degrees so there's no largest angle you can just keep on going around and around and around and around and just like there's no largest number there's no largest angle where whatever measure you have, it's going to end up somewhere here on this, in, in one of these four quadrants. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, well, okay, if I have an angle that's going straight up like this, how do I know if it's 90 or if it's 450 degrees? Well, you don't. You don't know if it's 90 or 450. All you see is where the angle at, uh, ended up, okay? Uh, but in a way, it doesn't really matter whether it's 450 or whether it's 90. And uh, there's a term for this. It's called coterminal angles. These are angles that point in the same direction. 90 and 450 are coterminal. 540 and 180 are coterminal. 270 and 630 are coterminal. 0, 360, and 720 are all coterminal angles. Uh, now, how do you tell if an angle is a uh, coterminal? Well, I guess one thing you could do is you could uh, 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 you could just graph it. Let's see. I'm wondering, are 160 and 520 coterminal angles? Uh, well, let's see. 160, that's a little bit less than 180, so it's going out like this. And 520 is a little bit less than 540, so yeah, it looks it looks like they're probably coterminal angles. Well, there's actually a really easy way to tell, and that is you just... Oops, where'd it go? There we go. Okay, I missed. There it is. And that is, you just take one of the measures and you subtract the other one from it. And you see, is my answer a multiple of 360? If the answer is a multiple of 360 degrees, then that means the answer is a multiple of an entire circle. And that means, yes, they are coterminal angles. Okay? So, uh, as we saw, there is no largest angle that you can, uh, that you can have. But now what I'm wondering is... What about a smallest angle? Would zero be the smallest angle possible? Au contraire, it's not the smallest angle possible. You also have negative angles, okay? You have, uh, um, you have negative 90 degrees. You have negative 180 degrees. You have negative 270, negative 360. Uh, oops, negative 450, negative 540, negative 630, negative 720, and just so on and so on and so on. You can just keep on spinning for as long as you want to. And what we see is any real number can, uh, uh, if you measure, if you, if you take that many degrees, it will correspond to some angle that is here on the coordinate plane. All right? So is that the only way to measure angles? The answer to that is, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, there is an equally popular way to measure an angle, and that is using radians instead of degrees. Now, you may be wondering, well, how much is a radian? 
Well, the best way to show how much a radian is, is to use this circle here. And uh, this is the unit circle. That is, it has a center at zero, zero, and the radius is one. Now, if I were to, uh, let me get rid of this. Okay. So if I were to uh, take my radius, and if I were to just wrap it around the circle like this, what I would get is an arc that looks kind of like that. Okay? This far. Well, that arc describes exactly what one radian is. So if I have an angle going out like that, that angle is exactly one radian. You can see a radian is a lot bigger than a degree. Matter of fact, a radian is uh, it's almost 60 degrees. Um, so if that's one radian, then I guess uh, this would be two radians, three radians, four radians, five radians, six radians. And we have an uneven number of radians making it all the way around the circle, which is you know, looks kind of uh, like that wouldn't be very handy. Um, how many radians does go all the way around the circle? Well, it's actually a pretty easy question. Think about it. What's the circumference of a circle? It's 2 pi r, right? Well, r in this case is 1, so that means the circumference of the circle is 2 pi. So that means the number of radians going around the circle is 2 pi. If pi is approximately 3.14, that means 2 pi is approximately 6.28. And yep, that makes sense. This looks like about 6 and a quarter or so. And uh, more specifically, it's about 6.28. Now, I generally don't... Uh, uh, I generally don't write my radians as 6.28 or 3.14 or something like that. Usually I keep the pi in there. And, uh, well, let me just show you what I'm talking about. Um, let's say that uh, I have, uh, well, that, I'm sorry, uh, there, there's zero degrees. Zero degrees is zero radians. And there's 360 degrees, which we just established a second ago is two pi radians. If I want to measure half the circle, well, then that would be uh, 180 degrees, half of 360, or pi radians. So pi gets you halfway around the circle. What about a quarter of the way around the circle? Well, that would be half of those measures, 90 degrees or pi over 2. Uh, what about three quarters of the way around the circle? Well, that would be 270 or 3 pi over 2. And what about an eighth of the way around the circle? Well, that would be 45 degrees or pi over 4. As you can see, this is very, uh, it's just proportional. It's not rocket science here. Um, that if you want to, if you have a, uh, an angle in degrees and you want to change it to radians, what you do is you just take that measurement, multiply it times pi over 180, and that'll get you the number of radians uh, to measure that angle. If you already have your angle in radians, well, then you would just multiply times the reciprocal of that uh, fraction in the first one, 180 over pi, and that'll get you the number of degrees. So let me show you a, um, let me show you a, an example here. Let's say I have 60 degrees, and uh, I want to describe 60 degrees in radians. Well, I would take that 60, multiply it times pi over 180, and voila, I get 60 pi over 180, which simplifies to pi over 3. So yes, 60, a 60 degree angle is an angle of measure pi over 3. Oh, one more thing I want to add, and that is, uh, you'll notice that uh, when you write an angle in degrees, you have that little circle there, okay, that, uh, that indicates degrees. When you write an angle in radians, there is no symbol. So if you see that the measure of an angle is just a number and there's no symbol there at all, you can assume that that angle is written in radians, not in degrees. Uh, let me give you another uh, example here. Uh, the example of this time we have the we initially have the angle in radians. It's five pi over six. Um, and if I want to know how many degrees that is, well, I take my radians, five pi over six, and I multiply times one eighty over pi. Uh, since you have a pi in the numerator and denominator, those are just going to cancel out, and you're going to get five times one eighty over six, which simplifies to one hundred and fifty degrees. Uh, Another uh, example would be, ooh, that's right, negative angle. Okay, so negative 40 degrees is 40 degrees going down instead of up. And if I want to measure that in radians, I would say, well, that's going to be negative 40 pi over 180. And that simplifies to negative 4 over 18, which is negative 2 pi over 9. Okay, 
And like I said, this is generally how we write our, uh, our radians. We don't write it in decimal form. We don't convert pi to 3.1415926. Uh, that's, that's just too cumbersome. We just leave it as a fraction and leave the pi in there. Okay? So what do I hope you have gotten out of this video? Well, I hope that you're going to remember what a coterminal angle is. I hope you're going to remember that the difference between coterminal angles is always a multiple of 360, or if you're measuring in radians, that would be a multiple of 2 pi, because that's one trip around the circle. Um, I hope you remember that angles can be measured in degrees or also in radians, and I hope you remember how to convert from radians to degrees or to convert from degrees to radians, and that's what we're supposed to get out of this video. All right, thank you very much, and uh, I guess I'll see you at the next video.